Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. What happens when a desperate plea from a tiny, peaceful civilization collides with the indomitable spirit of humanity? Let's get into the story. The transmission crackled into the command center of the deep space cruiser Orion. It wasn't the usual static of subspace chatter, nor the coded bursts of military channels. This was something else. High-pitched, a desperate warble with a cadence that was distinctly not human. Commander Harris furrowed his brow. Isolate and enhance. I'll see what the void has coughed up this time. Seconds stretch, the tension thickening with each passing moment. Then the warble resolved itself. Tiny voices tinged with fear echoed through the vast chamber. Mayday! Mayday! This is uh, an elder male of the Lilum. We, uh, we are under attack. Please! The voices dissolved into distressed chirps, the signal fading in and out. Harris exchanged a look with his communications officer, Lieutenant Jacobs. Can you trace it? Jacobs' fingers flew over the console. Uh, rough triangulation gives us a system on the edge of explored space. No known sentient life catalog. A grim silence hung in the air. After a lifetime of encountering the strange and occasionally hostile, Harris had learned one harsh truth. A plea for help in the vastness of space was often the prelude to tragedy. It, sir, the signal's back, Jacobs announced. Another burst clearer this time, and accompanied by something far more concerning. The whine of energy weapons. The roar of explosions. Elder Amel's voice was strained, barely recognizable. They came from nowhere. Ships like giant insects. Our defenses are useless. Please, someone. Harris felt the weight of a thousand similar calls. Distress beacons that had ended in either chilling silence or the blood-curdling screams of unknown species. But those voices... They were so small, the terror so childlike. It stirred something uncomfortable in his chest. Helm, he barked. Set a course. Let's see who decided to make us babysitters today. The Orion surged with purpose, warp drive straining as the Leviathan ship tore through the void. The crew was a flurry of controlled chaos. Tactical teams ran diagnostics, scientists analyzed the limited snippets of alien communication, and engineers prepared for the unknown. Harris paced the command center, his usually granite-like expression etched with uncertainty. They were venturing into uncharted territory, both literally and figuratively. Uh, Commander, we're approaching the system, Jacobs reported, his voice tight. Sensors are picking up, he hesitated. Well, it's like nothing I've ever seen, sir. The main view screen flickered, resolving into an image that made Harris frown. The system was dominated by a lush green planet, seemingly teeming with life. Yet in orbit, chaos reigned. Ships of insectile design swarmed, sleek and predatory, unleashing waves of destructive energy upon what had to be Leelum vessels, crude, cobbled together contraptions that looked more like flying crates than warships. Magnify, Harris snapped. The screen zoomed in and he cursed under his breath. The Leelum ships were hopelessly outmatched. Each blast from the insect ships vaporized them, scattering debris and tiny specks across the void. Those bastards are committing genocide, muttered Lieutenant Davis, the helmsman. Harris clenched his jaw. Davis wasn't wrong. This was a massacre, cold and calculated. Open a channel, wideband broadcast. He didn't know the aggressors would even understand human speech, but he had to try. This is Commander Harris of the human vessel Orion. You are ordered to cease all hostilities immediately. There was iron in his tone, echoing the authority of a thousand generations of military might. For a moment, there was silence. Then a new voice filled the bridge, harsh and guttural, dripping with contempt. Humans, oh, what are you doing in this worthless system? Do not interfere. This does not concern you. The targeting of defenseless civilians always concerns us. Harris retorted, his voice dangerously calm. You will withdraw or face the consequences. A raspy laughter buzzed through the comms channel. <laughs> consequences from a single ship. You humans are so amusing. Very well, let us witness the might of your vaunted species. The insectile ships broke formation momentarily. Several realigned, their weapon systems converging on the Orion, shimmering with lethal strategy. The bridge lights dimmed as the cruiser's own considerable defenses powered up. 
Sir, they're locking on. Jacob's voice had a hint of panic. Don't flinch, Lieutenant. Harris replied, a flicker of a smile playing on his lips. We've been itching for a test run. Weapons, target the primary emitters. Full salvo. The Orion roared. Energy beams lanced out, searing the blackness of space. Insectile ships flared with blinding explosions. Not vaporized, but crippled. Harris knew that was intentional. A show of superior firepower, but not outright destruction. From the aggressors came a hiss of surprise and then fury. You will pay for this! Exterminate them! The Kretsch, it seemed, were now their enemy. A fitting name. Harris mused grimly. Tactical evasive maneuvers. Keep them on their toes. Let's see if these bugs can dance. The Orion, built for long-range warfare, wasn't known for its agility. But in Harris's hands, the massive ship became an unlikely predator. He weaved through the storm, expertly dodging incoming fire while his gunners harassed the Kretsch at every opportunity. It wasn't about winning. Not yet. It was about buying time and gathering data. Commander! Jacob sounded awed. Their formation, it, it's chaos. They're breaking apart. Keep the pressure up, Harris ordered. Comms, I need those Lilum transmissions translated stat. The bridge was electric. Despite facing an unknown enemy with overwhelming numbers, there was a sense of predatory excitement. Humanity thrived on the edge of the abyss, and the Orion's crew were the sharpened tip of that spear. Hours bled into a blur of tactical brilliance and controlled aggression. Harris was a symphony conductor of laser beams and evasive maneuvers, analyzing the Kretsch with clinical precision. Their rigid formations, their predictable attack patterns, it all spoke of a species relying on overwhelming force rather than adaptable strategy. Jacobs burst through the hum of the tactical chatter. Commander, I have comms of the Lilum. It's rough, but workable. Patch him through. A hesitant voice full of awe and fear filled the bridge. This is uh, Elder Emel. Are you the, uh, the giants who came to our aid? Affirmative, Elder. I am Commander Harris of the Orion. Can you describe your world? We need a safe place to land. There was a long pause. Giants? But you are so small. Amel's confusion was evident. Then finally, realization dawned. Our world, yes. Uh, uh, landing zone. Mm, uh, uh, follow our distress beacons. Uh, there is a clearing. Harris grinned. The Lylam were clearly a race of minuscule stature. This was going to get interesting. The Orion swooped low over the green world. Sensors strained to find the Lylam landing site, but their lush forest canopy made it virtually impossible. Sir, picking up multiple bio-readings clustered together, Jacobs reported. Uh, about a kilometer from those distress beacons. It's a clearing, as they said. Set her down, Harris commanded, a sliver of unease prickling at him. He had a feeling this was about to get a lot more personal. The massive cruiser descended, its landing struts crushing the dense vegetation. Harris, flanked by his hand-picked security detail, stepped out of the airlock and blinked. It was like a scene ripped from a child's fairy tale. Tiny beings, barely reaching his knee, stood before him. Huge, luminous eyes, shimmering wings like those of a dragonfly, and delicate, twig-like limbs. The Lylum. The Lylum delegation was an odd tableau of fear and fascination. They trembled, their voices barely above a whisper. But their eyes darted over every inch of the humans, taking in their imposing forms, their unfamiliar gear. Elder Amel, slightly taller than the rest, stepped forward, his voice wavering. Uh, uh, greetings, giants. We, we are eternally grateful. I never believed the legends were true. Harris took a measured step forward and lowered himself carefully to one knee, mindful of the fragile beings before him. We are pleased to be of assistance, Elder. However, time is of the essence. Tell me about the Kretsch, their numbers, their tactics, anything that could give us an edge. A grimness fell over the Lylum. Amel wrung his thin hands together. They are brutal, relentless. Our primitive weapons are worthless against their shields. We are no warriors, just a peaceful people. Our only defense was to hide, but they found us. The humans exchanged grim looks. They had a classic underdog scenario on their hands, the kind that ignited something primal in the human spirit. Sir, 
Lieutenant Jacobs spoke up, his eyes burning with determination. With your permission, we could fortify this clearing. Basic perimeter defenses, motion sensors, we could give these people a fighting chance. Harris regarded the Lylam, their desperation etched onto their tiny faces. It was a gamble, a massive deviation from their initial recon mission, yet something about their wide-eyed vulnerability. The faint echo of those terrified voices in the transmission resonated with him on a fundamental level. He stood, his voice echoing with a newfound resolve. Lieutenant Jacobs, you have the bridge. Commander Harris out. He stripped off his insignia communicator and gently placed it at Amel's feet. Elder Amel, we're not leaving. Our first duty is to protect, and today, the Lylam are under our protection. The clearing became a controlled frenzy of activity. Humans with their towering stature and advanced technology moved with surprising gentleness amidst the Lylam. The Elder watched in bewildered awe as the giants erected shimmering energy fields, deployed strange devices that hummed with power, and spoke in crisp bursts into tiny communicators. Commander Harris knelt beside him, his voice low and reassuring. We will do everything in our power to keep your people safe, Elder. Can you provide us with details of your settlements, their locations? Amel, with a newfound flicker of hope, eagerly directed the humans to a crude map etched on a large leaf. The human tactical officers huddled, their eyes tracing the lines, cross-referencing with sensor readings from the Orion. Lieutenant Davis approached, a determined glint in his eyes. Commander, if we can disperse the Lylam, make their settlements harder to find, we can buy them more time. Harris nodded. And we play to their strengths. We've analyzed Kretsch combat data. They're slow to react. They're dependent on visual identification. Small targets within dense vegetation could prove exceptionally difficult for them to find. But won't that leave Lylam even more vulnerable? Amel asked, a note of concern in his voice. Now that's where we come in, Elder. Jacobs reassured him. We're setting up a sensor network that'll cover the entire area. If the Kretsch comes sniffing around, we'll have plenty of warning. He placed a hand on the Elder's tiny shoulder. Your people can hide, but we'll be their eyes. Understanding dawned on Amel's face. His people with their rudimentary technology had been huddling in fear. These giants had not simply brought firepower, they had brought a strange alien kind of hope. Days bled into a grueling cycle of fortification, evacuation, and tense anticipation. The Orion loomed protectively above, its sensors sweeping the planet relentlessly. Below, teams of Lylam and humans worked side by side, guided by the relentless efficiency of their new allies. The Lylam, initially timid, now moved with renewed purpose. Their tiny forms became a blur, ferrying supplies, guiding their people to hidden sanctuaries, their gossamer wings carrying improbable loads, watching them. Harris felt a grudging admiration. They lacked strength, but not resilience. He found himself pulled aside by Lieutenant Jacobs, a look of grim satisfaction on the comms officer's face. Our little friends learn fast, sir. You should see this. Harris followed, curiosity peaked. Jacobs led him to a makeshift comm center where Lylam perched amidst human tech. With gentle encouragement from a technician, they wore jury-rigged headsets their antenna-like ears twitching as they translated the human's instructions into their own liquid chirps. Sensor network is almost online, Commander, Jacobs reported, a grin playing on his lips. The Lylams are naturals. They're reporting any unusual movement within a hundred mile radius. Harris raised a brow. We're enlisting child soldiers now, Lieutenant? Well, not soldiers, sir, Jacobs countered. Scouts. Their eyes are better suited to this jungle than ours. Besides, they're damned eager to help. The commander had to concede this point. The Lylam were desperate, their very survival hanging in the balance. And perhaps, in this odd partnership, they had found a way to fight back. He was pulled from his thoughts by Amel, hurrying forward. His voice quivered with urgency. Giants, your sensors. There is movement. A large force. The creature returning. A ripple of tension surged through the humans. Here it was, the moment they had been preparing for. Harris gripped his sidearm, the cold metal reassuring against his palm. Tactical status, his voice boomed through the makeshift command center. Humans and Lylam alike turned towards a blinking holographic display. A sea of red dots converged on the map, an impossible number of Kretsch ships descending upon the unsuspecting planet. Lieutenant Davis swore, Commander, they haven't just come back, they've brought an invasion force. Harris felt the familiar thrill of battle, a tightness in his chest that wasn't fear, but a strange sort of elation. The Orion was vastly outnumbered, 
but they had one thing the Kretsch lacked, a plan. Elder Amel, he said, his voice calm and measured. Do your people know the evacuation protocols? Amel nodded frantically. Yes, the moment the alarm was raised, they dispersed into the forest. Harris turned to his crew. All right, people, you know the drill. We turn this planet into a fortress. Weapons, target those drop ships. If we can disrupt their deployment, we may buy at least some time. He strode out of the command post, the lilum parting to let him through, their oversized eyes filled with a mix of terror and trust. Taking a deep breath, he activated his comm link. Orion, this is Commander Harris. Priority override, execute plan B. Aboard the cruiser, silence descended as the crew acknowledged the chilling order. Plan B, born out of sleepless nights and desperate tactical sessions, wasn't a conventional defense strategy. It was a scorched earth policy. A last resort designed to turn the Lylam's homeworld into a hunter's nightmare. From orbit, the Orion unleashed a calculated symphony of destruction. Target points meticulously chosen to maximize chaos and disruption glowed red on their tactical map. They weren't targeting the Kret ships directly, but their objectives were far more insidious. Explosive charges detonated across the pristine landscape, sending tremors through the earth. Volcanoes long dormant were goaded into roaring life, spewing ash and molten fury. Rivers were tactically diverted, their paths altered to flood swathes of the forest floor. It was environmental warfare, the kind humanity had vowed never to utilize undeveloped worlds. But desperate times called for desperate measures. Back on the ground, Harris watched the world transform. The Lylum, alerted by the initial bombardment, had vanished into the undergrowth, their tiny settlements dissolving into the wilderness. The planet itself had become their shield. Lieutenant Jacobs approached a grim look on his face. The Kretsch dropships are entering the atmosphere, Commander. They haven't even adjusted course despite the chaos. He shook his head. Either they're arrogant or incredibly dumb. Likely both, Harris replied. Their sensors will see this as natural upheaval. Nothing to deter them from their primary goal. Extermination. And that, Davis added, a predatory glint in his eye, is exactly what we're counting on. The first Kretsch dropships descended, their insectile forms disgorging armored troops. The warriors swarmed out, weapons raised, only to be met with nothing. Lush vegetation had turned into impassable swamps. Smoldering craters blocked their path. The air hummed with static from volcanic ash, scrambling their comms. They're blind, Jacobs confirmed, a tremor in his voice. Our interference protocols are working. They're stumbling around like headless flies. Harris turned and scanned the clearing. The Lylam were nowhere to be seen. Good. Now is humanity's turn to play Hunter. Harris's squad moved like wraiths through the transformed jungle. The Kretsch were disoriented, isolated, blind to the presence of their new enemy. Humans trained in the harshest conditions now found their enhanced senses and advanced gear gave them an overwhelming advantage in the disrupted environment. The first ambush was brutal and efficient. A Kretsch patrol caught off guard by a sudden mudslide found themselves surrounded. Neural disruptors flashed, dropping the insectoid warriors with silent precision. Harris knelt beside one of the twitching creatures, its segmented body eerily still. They're heavily armored, he observed, but slow to react to the unexpected. Davis grinned, his eyes feral. So we make the unexpected our primary weapon. Their progress was a symphony of controlled chaos. Tripwires, snares, illusions projected via hack Kretsch comms, all designated to sow terror and confusion. They were ghosts, exploiting the fear they themselves had engineered. News filtered back through the crackling comm network the Lylam had established. The Kretsch had split up to scour the planet, falling for the deceptive lore of the supposedly undefended villages. Squads reported ambushes, hit and run attacks. The Kretsch were bleeding, losing their numerical advantage one small battle at a time. Yet Harris knew this was just the beginning. Their enemy was formidable, relentless, and the odds remained brutally stacked against them. And while the Orion harassed the Kretsch fleet from orbit, they couldn't hold out indefinitely. As they paused at a rendezvous point, a cluster of Lylam emerged from the dense foliage. Elder Amel approached, his luminous eyes wide with a strange mix of horror and awe. He pointed a trembling finger towards the sky. Giants, look! Harris followed his gaze and felt a chill run down his spine. A massive carrier ship was breaking through the clouds, a monstrous silhouette dwarfing the other Kretsch vessels. This, this was the true invasion. 
A wave of grim resignation washed over Harris. They'd slowed the Kretsch, bought time, given the Lylam a fighting chance. Yet faced with the arrival of their true armada, it seemed futile. The Orion was one ship against a swarm, and their guerrilla tactics on the ground would be worthless against such overwhelming numbers. He turned to his team, exhaustion etched their faces, but their eyes burned with unwavering resolve. The impossible had become their battlefield, and humanity had never been known to retreat in the face of the inevitable. New plan, people, he announced, forcing a grin. Seems like it's time we invited ourselves to the party upstairs. Lieutenant Jacobs blinked. Sir? We take on that carrier with what? Spitballs? Harris chuckled darkly. <laughs> we go in light, fast, and we make it count. Orion, prep the shuttles. We're gonna hijack ourselves a Kretsch flagship. The plan was audacious, reckless, and perfectly in line with the kind of batshit crazy maneuvers that had made humanity a force to be reckoned with throughout the galaxy. The Lylam, overhearing the exchange, chirped in alarm. Elder Amel stepped forward urgently. Giants, wait! While you fight in the heavens, there is still something we can do. His voice trembled, but his eyes held a newfound determination. My people, we are small, but we are many. We know tunnels beneath this world, pathways the Kretsch will never find. Let us fight our own war. Harris considered the tiny creature before him. The Lylam were not warriors, but they had become survivors. And in the face of extinction, perhaps there was no greater warrior spirit. Elder, he said his voice thick. We may fight amongst the stars, but the heart of this battle lies with you. The shuttle streaked towards the Kretsch carrier, nimble gnats against the monstrous bulk of the enemy vessel. Inside, Harris and his team readied themselves, their hearts pounding with adrenaline. They won't be expecting this, Davis muttered, checking his weapon systems. They think we're savages hiding on the primitive world below. Well, let's make sure they regret that assumption, Jacobs countered, a fierce smile splitting his face. The shuttle struck, not bothering with a docking request. Explosive charges tore through the Kretsch hull, breaching an auxiliary hangar. Harris led the charge, storming into the alien vessel like a whirlwind. The Kretsch, taken utterly by surprise, initially faltered. Humans, armored and armed, surged through the corridors, exploiting the momentary confusion. But the insectoid soldiers rallied, their weapons spitting destructive energy, forcing the humans into a desperate fighting retreat. Harris ducked a sizzling blast, shouting into his comm. Orion, we're in! I need you to run interference! Draw their fire! From orbit, the Orion responded with a vengeance. Beams of destructive energy lanced towards the carrier, forcing the Kretsch to divert their attention. Harris seized the opportunity, his voice echoing in the cramped corridor. Fall back! We're leading them to the bridge! It was a gambit, a desperate attempt to wrest control from the heart of the enemy ship. The Kretsch swarmed after them, their guttural roars echoing in the sterile metal passages. This was close quarters combat at its most brutal. A vicious melee where humans unleashed their primal fury honed over centuries of conflict. The bridge loomed ahead, a massive chamber filled with flashing consoles and insectile figures. Harris, followed closely by his dwindling team, charged in, neural disruptors blazing. It was chaos incarnate, a final, desperate fight for survival. The Kretsch Bridge was a maelstrom of violence. Humans and insectoids clashed, the confined space amplifying the sounds of gunfire, screams, and the hiss of alien weaponry. Harris fought with the ferocity of a cornered beast, each blast from his disruptor a testament to the relentless will of humanity. Jacobs fell, a sizzling blast searing through his armor. Davis roared in fury, unleashing a barrage of grenades, the explosions momentarily scattering the Kretsch. In that brief window of respite, Harris surged forward, reaching the central command console. Jacobs, did we bring any party favors? He yelled over the din of battle. One sec, Commander. Jacobs, though wounded, fumbled with a pack strapped to his side. He ripped something free, a wicked grin splitting his face. Meet the nano swarm, Kretsch. Enjoy. He hurled the device into the heart of the console. It exploded, but not with fire and shrapnel. Instead, microscopic machines billowed outwards, a relentless metallic cloud that devoured circuitry, scrambled commands, and spread with horrifying speed. The carrier shuddered. Lights flickered and died. Weapon systems powered down. Kretsch warriors twitched, their movements stuttering as the nanoswarm infiltrated their very armor. On their view screens, the Kretsch fleet was in disarray. 
The Orion, seizing the opportunity, unleashed a devastating salvo, crippling ship after ship. Harris turned, surveying the chaos he had unleashed. Cretch bodies lay sprawled amidst flickering consoles. His surviving team was battered, bloodied, but alive. And in their eyes, he saw the thrill of victory tempered with the weary knowledge that this was far from over. A guttural screech cut through the air. A hulking Cretch commander, its segmented armor glistening, charged towards Harris. It was overmatched, outgunned, but fueled by a rage born from the realization that its carefully planned invasion was collapsing. Harris raised his own weapon, a grim acceptance in his eyes. This final duel, man against insect, would be fought with primal fury, a desperate echo of the countless last stands that had shaped humanity's blood-soaked history. And then, a chorus of tiny voices pierced the chaos. The lilum erupted under the bridge, a tide of minuscule warriors. They swarmed the Kretsch commander, wings buzzing, tiny blades flashing. The insectoid beast roared, thrashing, but it was hopelessly outnumbered. The lilum fell upon it with a frenzy born of desperation, their delicate forms fueled by a determination that belied their size. Harris watched, transfixed as the tide turned. The Kretsch commander, overwhelmed and fatally wounded, finally collapsed under the relentless lilum assault. It was an absurd sight, a testament to the unpredictable ways in which courage manifested. He staggered to a console, his strength waning. Orion, this is Harris. The carrier's ours, I repeat. The carrier is ours. His voice crackled with exhaustion and a profound sense of relief. The battle wasn't over, not yet. But in that moment, as giants and insects bled side by side on an alien bridge, a flicker of hope had ignited. It was a testament to the unbreakable bonds forged in the crucible of war, and the undeniable truth that even the smallest of allies could tip the scales towards a hard-fought victory.